Hey, we welcome you here today. We're glad to be on the internet and available to bring worship to you and into your home. Hopefully there's more than just uh, one person or two people sitting there. Hopefully, maybe in some places you've got uh, uh, three or four or five and you have your own home church, but it gives us an opportunity to, to lift up our voices and praise the God of the heavens. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the opportunity that we have and the technology that we have today that we can come into people's homes and worship together, even though we're far apart. So be with us this morning as we encourage each other and we lift up your name among people. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. When Jesus rode into Jerusalem, the crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed him shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, who is this? And the crowds answered, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Praise is rising. Eyes are turning to you. We turn to you. Hope is stirring. Hearts are yearning for you. We long for you. Cause when we see you, we find strength to face today. God who 
saves us Worthy of all our praises Hosanna Hosanna Come in your way among us We welcome you here, Lord Jesus Hosanna Hosanna You are the God who saves us Worthy of all our praises, Hosanna, Hosanna, come have your way among us, we welcome you here, Lord Jesus, Hosanna, Hosanna. that we don't get to see little kids going around the sanctuary with the palm branches and all but I can picture it in my head of years past and knowing that in that great throng in Jerusalem there were kids there there were uh, women and men and, and people laying down their their palm branches and their cloaks for for Jesus to ride through on on the way into Jerusalem and and it humbles me and I, I know that it may humble you, and, and we know that Jesus is our answer for so many things in life, and we are grateful for him. He is the thing that is true for us. Whatever is true, Whatever is right Whatever is pure Whatever is lovely We will fix our thoughts On these things Jesus, you're true. Jesus, you're right. Jesus, you're pure. You are lovely. We will fix our up our hearts is our praise to you.
Jesus, you're true. Oh, Jesus, you're right. Jesus, you're pure. Accept our worship this morning. May you be blessed in all that we do. As we hear your word, as we hear the voices of those who will sing along, sing that there's no, no one like you. We come into your presence and still our hearts and our minds. We ask for you to give us peace in this time of worship. that you would call to our minds whatever we need specifically to pray for. For those that are sick, for those that are homebound and feel deserted or isolated, for those that have lost jobs, for those that are trying to struggle with less pay than they had before. We worry about our finances as well as our health. But let our spiritual health continue to be strong. Build us up. Give us strength. Let us not have fear. Let us press on. Let us be able to rejoice because we have a God of peace.
presence this morning. Fill us with your spirit. We thank you, Lord. And all the saints said amen. Amen. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you. God bless. God bless. Well, it's good to see you again on YouTube, and I hope we, we were able to bring you into a, a mood of worship with the songs we just did. Uh, I was wondering, can you remember your first car? I remember my first car. I, uh, there were some essential things I wanted. I wanted buck, bucket seats, I wanted a shifter, and I wanted a radio. Not didn't have to be FM. AM was good enough for me. And then also, as things wore out, I wanted to upgrade certain things. So one of the things was when the muffler wore out, I wanted to get a louder muffler. <laughs> it wouldn't be a muffler anymore. I didn't know about cherry bombs, but I did know about thrush mufflers. Sold those at the Kmart store. So somebody told me, go down to Kmart, get one of those. I, I did, changed it out. And when I put it on, it wasn't like, it wasn't a whole lot louder. Um, they said, don't worry about it. As it burns out on the inside, it will get definitely, definitely get louder. So now as I grow an adult, as I work over at the Parsonage, I, I notice a lot of cars and motorcycles and trucks that seem to be designed to distract me from what I'm trying to do. Uh, they'll punch it down as they're, they're headed out, out of town and just gets louder and louder. I've also noticed that there are considerable EMT and, and fire trucks uh, making their runs each day. And it's not just once a day. It seems like there's several a day. And I pray for those individuals that they're, they're coming to check on. And then you've got Rumpke dumping their dumpsters over uh, across the way and different ones banging and slamming. You've got lawnmowers and, and it just seems like on and on it goes. But hey, I'm not stressed. I just want some peace and quiet. Doesn't everybody? We have that down in New Richmond. When I go down there, it's, it's nice. And you might hear a lawnmower off in a distance, but there's nothing really, really loud there. You can sit on the deck and enjoy your coffee. And I'm sure many of you have that where you live, whether you've uh, found it outside or maybe you've got um, a fortress of solitude inside but you found a place where you can relax and, and kind of block out some of those noises. Or you may be like Donna, and they just don't bother you. You know, we can't live a life where we're anxious all the time. We all need some peace in our lives. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you that you have given us peace through your son, Jesus Christ. And we ask that you would give us that peace this morning and, and not only today, but each and every day that we live, that we would know your peace and it would fill us to overflowing. May something in your word today speak to each of us. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. In the final verse that we had last week, starting chapter 4 in Philippians, Paul thinks very highly of these people in the church of Philippi. He said, Therefore, my brothers, you whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, that is how you should stand firm in the Lord, dear friends. Friends. He loves these people. He goes on to address an issue that has come up between two women in the church, Yodia and Sintech. He says, I plead with you, with Yodia, and I plead with Sintish to agree with each other in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you, loyal yoke fellow, help these women who have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel, along with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. Now, we don't know what the issue is that has come up between these two women, but it appears that there's a quarrel between them. Now, of course, you know that never happens in the church today. Well, maybe sometimes. But, you know, this, this quarreling in the church doesn't have to be between two women. It could be men, or it could be between a man and a woman, or men and women, or the pastor and the members. That's even more rare. <laughs> Things like this do happen. We're human. 
We don't check our, our opinions and, and emotions at the door when we walk into the sanctuary. Paul's plans was for these two women to work it out and live a, a life that would be more amicable and be a better witness, not only to the, the church fellowship, but to the community outside. And he asked others in the church to come alongside of them to, to help get this settled between the two of them. They've both been contending for the gospel, as Paul said, and as he has been doing. So it would be a shame for their witness for loving one another to be destroyed by this disagreement that they're having with one another. He continues, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition and with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. As I said last week, Paul uses the words joy and rejoice more in this letter than any of the letters that are in the New Testament. In spite of the persecutions Paul has gone through over the years, he's still able to say rejoice. He truly does have the spirit of Jesus in his heart. And through his example, he tells this church, this church that may already be feeling the, the beginnings of persecution, he tells this church how to have the same peace that he has. He tells them that Jesus is always near. So why be anxious if you know that the Lord is right near you? Don't be anxious, he says, but pray about everything. Did you catch the part about giving thanks for all that you have? It may not be much, or it could be a lot. But give God thanks for all of it and for the life that you are living today. What was it Jesus said about asking God the Father for anything? He's back in the Gospel of Matthew, in chapter 7, it says this, Ask, and it will be given to you. Jesus says, Seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? Good questions that Jesus has there. Do you know what that good gift is? Have you ever pondered that? It's the Holy Spirit. He isn't about giving a, a new car or house payments or a perfect health, although he may do those things. It's the Holy Spirit that we need to have in our hearts. And he will guide us and give us wisdom and lead us in the ways of Jesus. That's the most important thing that we could ask for from God, is His Holy Spirit. With the Holy Spirit in us, we will never be defeated. And that's why Paul writes this in verse 7 of this letter to the Philippians. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This peace of God. Whenever we find ourselves in turmoil, desperate, worried, or concerned in any way, we, we need the peace of God that, that comes through his Holy Spirit. He will guard our hearts and our minds, especially in times like we're living in today. Paul goes on. He says, finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, Put it into practice, and a God of peace will be with you. Again, Paul is the example of how to deal with adversity in your life. Were there times that Paul got frustrated? I'm, I'm sure there were. But it didn't last forever. He, he didn't dwell on it. He didn't just keep bringing it back up. He pressed on. Paul was the, one of the premier writers for the power of positive thinking. You thought that just happened in the 70s. But for him, it's all based in Jesus, not himself. When he writes about how he should conduct ourselves, it's in the light of our lives in Jesus. 
He focused his thoughts on what would be lived out in our day and today lives and, and how we should set our minds on him. Jesus is the truth. He is noble. He is pure. He is lovely. There was and never will be anyone else as admirable as Jesus. If you have a dictionary with the words excellent, praiseworthy, there should be a picture of Jesus right beside them. And if not, maybe you need to draw one in. Jesus is the one who exemplifies all of these words. And Paul says we should focus our thoughts on him and try our best to live in a way that models this to others. Again, if, if we'll do this, pray to God that we need each and every day and give him thanks and ask for his Holy Spirit to fill us up each day, then we too will, will have the peace that, that God has for us. He, God, is the giver of peace. Paul continues by saying he rejoices greatly because he knows that, that this church has been concerned for him. And yet, Paul has been able to maintain each and every day. He says, I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I've learned the secret of being content in, in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do everything through Him who gives me strength. Paul knows what it's like to, to have or have not. Either way, he makes the most of it. He doesn't let his circumstances get him down. His power of positive thinking doesn't come from him. It comes from Jesus. It isn't a philosophy of, well, if life gives you lemons, then just make lemonade. He isn't blinded by his surroundings or unaware. He's just able to adapt because of the Holy Spirit. Go back to what we just covered about praying and giving thanks and asking for the Holy Spirit. That's how God will share His peace with you, for He is that God of peace. This chapter has three verses that should be a part of every Christian's memory verse selection. Right up there with John 3.16. From verse 6, it says, Do not be anxious about anything but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present your request to God. Don't ever think that the problem you have isn't worth sharing with God. You got an enemy? Share their name with God. You're struggling with health or finance or work-related issues? Go to God in prayer. Nothing is too big and nothing is too small for God to hear. And maybe in the process you will get an answer that will help you deal with your problems. Clarify what your situation is and let your, your mind sort things out. Or maybe you'll be like Paul and, and God will give you peace and you can be content in everything. Even if your prayer isn't answered the way that you would like for it to be. And then verse 7 is the second one to commit to your memory. Let me read it in the English Standard Version. It says, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. One word is different there. Not terribly so. This version has surpasses, and the NIV reads transcends. They both mean the same. We cannot comprehend the mind of God, much less the peace that, that He can give to us. It's beyond our mortal capabilities. It surpasses or transcends anything that we could possibly imagine. And let, me, let me make a little bit of a comparison. If, think of all the stars in the night sky. On a clear night, no clouds, no lights, and look at all the stars. There's no way we could count them all. What was... God thinking when he created those stars. And what is beyond those stars? We can't see anything past what we can visibly see. It's hard to imagine something beyond what we can see, and especially if we've never seen it before. But why did God make those? For our appreciation? 
or for his. Doesn't matter. We can appreciate it all the same. This peace that God offers us is so far beyond what we could think of or visualize. Similar to not knowing what's beyond the stars. His peace is unimaginable. It transcends what we can imagine. It's a being in the presence of a holy God and Jesus' the Son and the Holy Spirit and have it all wrapped up in one. Paul writes something close to this in his letter to the church in Corinth in chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. Paul writes, However, as it is written, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love Him. But God has revealed it to us by His Holy Spirit. We've not seen what God has in store for those who love Him. It's only revealed that He loves us and has given us grace and mercy by salvation through Jesus, the Son of God. We have snippets of heaven, but, but it's really not a crystal clear picture. We do know. We do know that it is a glorious place because... God is there. Jesus is on the throne. And his saints are singing around the throne room along with the angels. And then commit verse 13 to your memory. Paul says, I can do everything through him who gives me strength. Are you struggling today with being homebound, laid off, out of school, not seeing your family or your friends? Ask God to give you strength. Pray to Jesus that he would reveal to you the power that he had to go to the cross. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you something else to focus on, to get your mind off your troubles, the struggles that you go through, even if it's for a short time. When I'm having an issue I, I need to deal with and it seems unmanageable or overwhelming to me, I repeat this verse. And those struggles, those obstacles somehow become better, at least in my mind. That peace starts washing over me, and I, and I realize I can get through this thing because I'm not doing it in my strength. I'm doing it in his strength. There are some closing comments that Paul makes to the church in this letter. I'm not going to... Uh, read all of those for you, but I would ask you to, to, write, uh, to read through those this week. Um, Paul writes about his troubles and about how the church has shared in them with him. In verse 18 and 19, Paul writes about an offering that the church in Philippi has sent to him. He says, I have received full payment and even more. I am amply supplied. Now that I have received from Epaphroditus the gifts that you had sent. They are a fragrant offering and an acceptable sacrifice pleasing to God. And my God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. Don't ever think that your gifts and your offerings aren't appreciated. Not only by the servants for Christ, but also they are appreciated by God. He realizes that you've sacrificed something to offer to him. Paul says that they are similar to the offerings that were given in the temple of Israel in the Old Testament. These offerings were, were put on an altar and offered up to God, and, and the fragrance that rose to heaven was a sweet smell, pleasing to God, know, knowing that there was an offering made to Him. And because of their sacrifice um, to Paul, in their offering to Paul, God would meet all of their needs at the church. And I believe that God will do the same for us if we're faithful in serving and giving to Him and to His kingdom. This chapter has a ton of things we can make individual messages about, but uh, I'm just trying to give you an overview of the letter to the Philippians. So go back and read this chapter this week and, and read the whole thing. It's only four chapters. And maybe... As you read it a second or third time, see how it speaks to you, especially in, in light of our current circumstances that we're living in. Paul wrote about joy and told of his rejoicing over and over in this letter. 
Why did he do that? I mean, was he just the type of guy who liked being the martyr and pointing it out to everybody, how, how hard he's had it? We all know people like that. This isn't the case for Paul. He has learned to live and be content with, with what he has or what he doesn't have. Either way, he, he has a joy in his heart. This is a man who has given Jesus control of his life, and that's why he can rejoice. I think some of the keys to Paul's positive attitude were in those verses in this chapter that we went over. He knew to present his thanks and prayer requests to God. He is a God who cares for us. Paul knew that God would give him peace because he was a God of peace. And Paul knew where his strength came from. It comes from God. Paul also knew that Jesus lived a life of humility. And for this reason, Paul did the same and encouraged the church to follow him and do likewise. And he encourages the church to work out, to live out their salvation by standing firm in the faith and pressing on towards the goal and trying to be more and more like Jesus every day. Now let me transition here a little bit. Many of you know that today is a day we celebrate as Palm Sunday. That's why I read the scripture at the beginning of our worship, and, and we sang the song, Hosanna. This was the beginning of a tumultuous week for Jesus and his disciples. But the week began with a great celebration, with a type of victory parade, as Jesus entered into the city of Jerusalem on a donkey. Many kings would ride horses after a victory. It helped to emphasize their importance in being a conquering king. Jesus didn't come to conquer. It wasn't uncommon for a king to ride a donkey either. This was a posture of peace, and that makes sense to me. As I said, Jesus didn't ride in to conquer. He came in peace. And I can't imagine a king riding into, riding into battle on a donkey. They're slower, they're smaller, and it's, it's kind of like riding in a small car. You can't... You can't see over the other cars. You can't see what's coming. You can only see the person next to you. When you're riding on a donkey, you're almost the same height as someone standing right beside you. And there isn't a lot of ego when you're on a donkey, or at least there isn't to me. And of course, Jesus never had an ego problem anyway. Now, when Jesus rode into Jerusalem that day, and he did, he was actually on the same level as all the people around him. They didn't have to look up to him. They could look him right in the eye at the same level. Jesus isn't someone who lords it over people. We either accept him or reject him as our king. He was humility personified. And also, today is the first day of the month, the day we typically signify as our day of communion. And I'm saddened by the fact that we're separate on this day as a fellowship. And I'm saddened by that each Sunday that we can't meet together, but this day in particular. We're out of communion with each other. But I'm confident in fact that we are never out of communion with Jesus. And so I'm not going to go through the elements online. I want to savor them with each of you when we can meet back together again as we remember the price that Jesus paid for all of us who call him Lord and King. But I do want to remember what he did for us. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 22, Luke writes what happened in the upper room the night before Jesus was arrested and, and nailed to the cross. Verse 14 starts, When the hour came, and Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the, the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them, saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is a, the new covenant of my blood, which is poured out for you. May we always remember the price that was paid for our freedom from sin as well as death. It cost the life of Jesus, the Son of God, to have victory over death for each of us. This is why we can claim the name Christian. We are to be like Christ, humble and loving, peaceful and living out our salvation each day. This is a high and holy recognition of what Jesus did for us. But it is also a time to rejoice. May we be filled with joy knowing that the God of all creation loves us this much. Jesus is our King and our Lord. And for those of us who can claim Him as such, we have much to shout about. When the throng of people shouted Hosanna, they were saying, praise God and His Messiah. We are saved. We too can shout, Hosanna, praise God and His Messiah. We are saved. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank You. We thank you that you thought enough of us, lowly humans, that you sent your Son to claim us for your kingdom. Father, allow our hearts to be turned towards you, not only on this day, but especially this day, as we remember the sacrifice that was made, that your blessing would be on each of us and, and stir our hearts anew, afresh, that we may be in your presence always and have your peace reside in our hearts. We thank you for all you've done and all you, you will do in the future. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, all of you stay safe, stay healthy. We look forward to the day when, when we will all have communion once again as a, a full fellowship, either in this place or the next. May you have a great week. God bless.